Okay, so in the interest of time, um, I think we'll go ahead and get kick started here. Uh, I do see that we're up to 12 participants and I'm sure people will be joining us as we move this along. So I won't come between you and Dr. Wong very much today, except as a quick reminder um, of ITLE's programming. And I'll also uh, take a quick look if Dr. Yang is here and she can say a few words as soon as I'm done. So just as a quick reminder for everyone, I know that I keep uh, uh, belaboring this point, but I think it's important to have that in everyone's um, sort of memory. So this is the fourth and the last of, a, of our first session on instructional design uh, series that was uh, hosted and organized by Dr. Wong. Um, and this particular program of the four uh, talks will result in a certificate of completion for all participants who have uh, responded to the survey on Canvas um, using our Canvas online course. So um, what I'd just like to remind everyone today for our records would be to please enter your name and your college affiliation in the chat box. And also if you could answer the survey once Dr. Wong is done, that would be great. Um, Dr. Wong and I and the ITLE uh, members uh, uh, with, with guidance from Dr. Yang, we are planning a second series of um, a similar workshop in instruction design during the summer of this year. And we will provide more information to you about that as soon as it is ready. Um, uh, ITLE also has another a series of programming in faculty development as you've been attending, and that is through more of a platform for discussion of pedagogy techniques and assessment strategies um, uh, where our CNU faculty present. We will soon in the summer also have external faculty members, uh, external um, experts in different areas of pedagogy who will be presenting at our second annual retreat. So at this time, I'd like to request if any of the colleges or your or faculty members have any specific topics that you would like us to cover during our second annual retreat, uh, if you could please reach out to me, that would be great. We're also developing um, internally, uh, based on the feedback we have received from faculty, our next iteration of the Healthcare Education Grant Award that I hopefully will be able to announce soon. We're hoping that uh, once we have the applications in, we will include these ideas on the HIGA Award from ITLE during the summer um, second annual retreat for ITLE. And I have a suspicion that I'm forgetting something very important to share with you, but I will probably come back and remind everyone. So if you would pardon me for that, I think I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Yang and see if she has any words, and then we will have Dr. Wong kickstart today's session. Thank you, Dr. Mahocha. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so happy to see you all uh, at the Italy uh, uh, platform and uh, uh, appreciate your presence since uh, this is such a busy time. Everyone has in the middle semester and a lot of accreditation is going on. And I'm very happy that the Office of Academic Fair can uh, provide uh, the support to the Italy with the various programming that could benefit our faculty. Uh, advancement, uh, uh, faculty further development. And we all know that as the university continues to grow and mature, uh, faculty development is always a critical essential things. Uh, faculties are the backbone of the university. Students may come and go, but faculty stay. Uh, they are the critical component to have a strong university and uh, we, uh, take this very seriously. We try to support as much as we can. I'm very happy that uh, Italy has been very instrumental to develop uh, many interesting programming. And we want all of you engage in this, that you can provide your input that where are the areas we need improvement, where the areas we can uh, provide the support seminar. And I'm very happy that Dr. Wang is able to provide a workshop in the instruction design mm -hmm. and that would definitely enhance our uh, current online teaching modality. And we just went through the medical school LCME site visit uh, beginning of this week. Uh, in that site visit, and uh, uh, many of us, particularly Dr. Mahaucha, talk a lot about Italy, how Italy helps the faculty advancement. And uh, in the end of the survey, I think the, 
uh, the survey teams already really know our name, Italy. And then they even said that in the end of the chair section, they said, hey, you have uh, Italy, that's a great. Uh, and uh, I, uh, what else do you have in the college to support the faculty development? So I recall a few years ago, we had a provisional uh, accreditation and uh, accredited they asked what kind of university level faculty development do you provide? And I'm glad that last few years, we have been uh, developed a lot of uh, unique uh, wide varieties of the program in the Italy. And I hope we continue to support uh, the Italy and the faculty development programs. And I encourage all of you to participate uh, this platform that uh, your voice will be heard and your suggestion, your recommendation uh, will be accommodated. Thank you all today. Enjoy the, the seminar today. I mean, the workshop from Dr. Wong. Thank you very much, Dr. Yang. Dr. Wong, I'll take one more minute. I'm so sorry. Uh, there is, uh, I finally remembered the other important thing I wanted to share. So I wonder if Dr. Linda Buckley is here. So um, there is another initiative that uh, ITLE is um, collaborating with the university, uh, the UARP. And I would love to invite Dr. Buckley if she's here or we can, I can provide a quick update. Dr. Buckley? Okay, she may be busy, so I'll just, uh, <clears throat> um, so Dr. Buckley is one of the members, uh, one of the nine members in the ITLE, and she is also uh, leading the uh, university uh, promotions conversation at the UARP, uh, along with other members. So this year, the UARP has uh, collaborated with ITLE to provide, uh, uh, you know, sort of a think tank conversation in the area of uh, faculty peer observations. So, so far at CNU, um, faculty peer observations, um, uh, uh, faculty peer evaluations was the strategy that, that was used in a number of colleges. And um, uh, Dr. Buckley has extensive experience in uh, a variety of areas of accreditation. And she has also uh, reached out to um, uh, experts at UCSF. And in collaboration with UCSF, she will be uh, in, and you, at UARP be providing programming. Um, the conversation would be, um, you know, should we be looking at faculty observations versus faculty peer evaluations? And so that programming uh, will be provided by a faculty expert in a Zoom session. And um, I believe that Dr. Buckley has, on behalf of the UARP, reached out to various college deans and college deans have nominated faculty within their colleges to attend this first series of training. And then uh, it will be a train the, tra train the trainer kind of modality where those people who attend this first training will then train uh, other faculty uh, within their programs. Uh, so just before I now turn it over to Dr. Wong, sorry for your taxing your patience, Dr. Wong. I just want to see Dr. Buckley's here for a moment. She is. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Wong. Please go ahead. Thank you. Um, so let's jump right in. <laughs> okay. So today we're going to talk about um, um, what you know what kind of uh, uh, learning materials are considered as engaging, and then um, and um, you know how we can uh, select the uh, why we're using these um, engaging learning materials to support learning. Um, so this is the the last of the four uh, equal uh, in the spring, and we'll have more in the summer. Um, here's the learning objectives, and I'm not going to repeat it because we all are intellectual you know, uh, intellectually capable of reading this. Uh, and the why, the what, the how, this is the signature of the of these uh, workshops in the spring. Um, so why, why are we, um, um, why do we need to, um, you know, consider using uh, engaging learning materials beyond just plain um, uh, textbooks, right? Um, so I don't know whether you have read the, the book called How People Learn. Um, and it talks about the how experts and, and the novice uh, perceives knowledge differently and how they learn differently. Um, so when you see this, uh, the screen, you might see that, oh, well, it's, it's uh, really crazy, right? So let me rearrange this for you. That might be easier. So uh, as you can see that this is the difference between uh, the novice and, and the experts when we uh, 
when, when they uh, learn things. Uh, for example, like a novice, uh, for example, our students uh, at the very beginning stage that they uh, just retain less due to the lack of the, the reading, relating things. Uh, but the experts actually have the, the knowledge stored in, a, in, in our brain as a schema. So things are related, not just the, the uh, that as a novice sees things that as unrelated. So, um, so uh, how can we go from here? And so I think uh, the next thing that I want to, uh, let me move the screen a little bit. Okay, so uh, I do have a book that I can share with you. I don't know whether you have read this or not. And I'm, I'm going to post this uh, in Canvas uh, where um, you probably have access uh, for workshop materials before. So I will do the same thing. It's called How People Learn by Bransford. Uh, so that's, so first thing that we know that experts and the novice um, learn things differently and perceive things differently. Uh, and then there is an activity that's coming up pretty quickly. Uh, it's called, what is my learning preference? So I would like you uh, to go to this site. Let me send this link to you. And uh, if you could, go to this website and the type in your answer. So let me demonstrate how this worked. So uh, you don't have to actually type your name and the date for now. Uh, let me see. Okay, so uh, when I see that, I like to listen and discuss work with a partner and I give myself a one and I don't put in anything as a no. Uh, I learn by hearing my own voice on uh, I would say probably no. So I put a one there as well. So let me uh, finish this while you're doing your own. I prefer to learn something new by reading it. Um, not really. I open, write down the directions. So uh, please go to the link and, and do the same as I am demonstrating right now. So as you can see, there are about 54 questions. And after you have put in all the numbers at the right places, and then at the bottom, you can see that here it scores for you automatically, right? So for me, I have, for now, I have eight for the visual and the seven for the auditory and the 10 for the uh, kinesthetic. Okay, so, so have you all done this already or not yet? Not yet. Okay, I'll, give, I'll finish this as well.
Okay, so I'm done. And uh, have you uh, got, gotten this screen um, tell you that uh, which one is the, the, the pretty much the dominant, the visual or auditory or kinesthetic? Uh, obviously, I have two uh, very uh, strong preferences uh, here. One is the visual and one is kinesthetic, which really speaks true uh, so faithfully, you know, to what uh, I normally, I, I realize that I learn more with, the, with lots of the visuals and, and the moving and hands-on activities, uh, not so much, you know, auditory just by itself. Uh, and if you uh, could uh, put in your uh, a dominant um, a preference. Could you please put in the other uh, share so that I uh, can see, so that we uh, we all can see? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Schneider. So you have uh, almost the same visual and kinesthetic and the auditory is eight. Thank you for sharing. Oh, thank you, Dr. Free, for, for sharing as well. Visual, then auditory. Equal on all three, wow, amazing. Oh, Dr. Clifford, you have kinesthetic and the visual. Interesting. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, I know that this is going to be, uh, hi, hi, Joanna, have uh, all three. Oh, is that the, 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 the order of the three? Thank you all for sharing. I know this is going to be long. Uh, I just want to share with you. Uh, oh, Dr. Wang, you have 15, eight and nine. Interesting, thank you. Well, okay. Um, thank you again for uh, for sharing all these. So uh, what um, the, the purpose of uh, doing this activity is for us to know that we all are different. So uh, when we uh, teach students how we recognize their differences, and when we, uh, for example, provide learning materials and then design activities, how we, how we can best support uh, and, uh, and use as much you know, um, learning preferences, uh, consider that, take as much consideration as possible. Um, to um, enhance their learning experience. Um, so let me get back to the next screen. Um, so you probably have all heard about the, the, the learning modalities, the, the, the VARC, right? The visual, auditory, reading, writing, and the uh, kinesthetic. Um, and then I do have some, um, uh, it's called the using learning uh, modalities. Um, it's a Google Doc. Uh, but um, I, do, I do not want to use too much for the time and then we may get back to later uh, because I really want to save something very important for some faculty to, to talk about their experience. Um, so um, so that we, we talk about the why, right? Because we have um, so many differences in learning preferences and we, we need to consider um, how we can um, really promote the different areas in our brain. Uh, to, to make sure that all areas are functioning when we are learning as students. Uh, so what are these uh, engaging materials? As we can see that in, in the, it, right now with all the technologies, we have uh, things beyond uh, the, uh, the traditional um, textbooks, uh, paper books, uh, paperbacks. Uh, and then we have, for example, like the, uh, the games, um, we have the, the videos, um, stimulations, ebooks, and we also have some technology like a soft chalk. Um, uh, private you know, companies, they use lots of things like a Captivate and Storyline uh, to design e-learning modules. Uh, and uh, now we use, uh, we have um, lots of you know, instructors who use YouTube channels um, and also that's you know, uh, videos as well uh, to uh, provide materials beyond uh, textbooks. So there's nothing wrong about uh, textbooks, but how we can supplement uh, other types, different types of materials uh, to enhance the learning of the, the, the reading uh, text by itself. Um, so when we talk about uh, using multimedia uh, learning, 
um, there is one big name uh, that we must, you know, everyone probably knows uh, is Richard Meyer, Meyer uh, that he, based on his years of research, that he uh, is a big name in the in the multimedia learning, and he has a, a series of book about to talk about this, and I'm going to share this in uh, Canvas as well. So in his cognitive theory of multimedia learning, that there are three uh, uh, assumptions. One is the dual channel assumption, um, which talks about um, when we learn uh, the, the, the multimedia learning that we have the visual uh, and the uh, auditory uh, channels that are processing at the, at the same time. Um, um, however, oops, oh, sorry. Um, and, and then the second assumption is the limited capacity assumption, uh, which talks about uh, each channel uh, has a limited capacity. Uh, it's a similar to what we probably have heard before. It's called the cognitive load. Uh, the third um, assumption of the cognitive theory of multimedia learning uh, is that uh, the active processing assumption. So uh, it's uh, in, in a nutshell, uh, it's about learning is an active process of filtering, uh, selecting, organizing, and integrating information uh, based on the prior knowledge. Um, so, um, how many of you have seen this uh, video before? I have. Okay. So, if you have, and then um, and then we'll we'll, we'll uh, see what happens at the end. Okay. Uh, let me see some chat here. Okay. Uh, so. Can, can you hear? Can you all hear? No. Oh, okay. So you need to, when you do share screen, you need to click the button for share sound. It's the very bottom of the share screen. Okay. So, I got it. Okay. Yeah. Share optimized video. Thank you. Uh, let me replay. Sure. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the basketball. Can you hear now? Yes. Oh, super. Thank you so much. How many passes did you count? So how many passes did you count? Okay, so uh, we have about, uh, oh, okay. Cool. Okay, so what? let me see the, the correct answer is 15 passes. The correct answer is 15 passes. But did you see the gorilla? Did you see the gorilla? Yes or no? Oh. I have to admit, I did not see the, so the gorilla as well. <laughs> it's, you know, it's so, it's so, we're so different. Uh, we have yes and a no, and uh, well, yeah, the gorilla distracted me. Interesting. <laughs> Okay, um, so the, 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 the reason why I thought about this video was when I took my intro to psychology, the, the, the cognitive learning theory class, and we talk about our memory and, and the, the other learning theory. And I thought about how, how does this relate to, uh, to uh, one of the, uh, earlier we talked about uh, the cognitive uh, assumption, right? The limited uh, capacity. So how, how, how what, what do you think that relates to the limited capacity? Because we were uh, given the instruction that we're going to focus on the task counting the pass so that we were not really paying much attention uh, to uh, the, uh, the gorilla coming entering uh, the, 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 the field. So anyway, this is just a, some um, kind of fun video. Uh, anyway, so let me get to the next uh, slide, which is the 12 principles for cognitive theory of multimedia learning. Um, so I'm not going through this 
uh, because like I said, we have so many CHS faculty here. And then I, I'm, I, I also believe that all faculty here have had all these brain research studies, uh, research, you know, uh, learn about the research before. So I'm not going to um, um, repeat this uh, in front of all these experts. Uh, but two, uh, two uh, learning theories, uh, the, the principles, the modality and the multimedia um, principles are frequently mentioned in the multimedia learning. Um, and so uh, I, I found some research, um, it, it talks about how the multimodal uh, learning, the uh, talks about that how uh, different modalities uh, can, uh, for example, let me see if I can uh, read this uh, to you. So one study on the left, uh, uh, which is titled Enhance the Learning Through Multimodal uh, Learn Training, uh, Evidence from a Comprehensive Cognitive, Physical, Fitness, and the Neuroscience Intervention. So uh, they, they have a study that um, uh, they, they did an intervention on the, the brain stimulation, yes. And their findings demonstrate that multimodal training significantly enhanced the learning uh, relative to computer-based uh, cognitive training alone uh, and provided an effective method to pr promote skill learning across multiple cognitive domains. So with that said, um, so I think that, that speaks to our uh, topic today. So. Uh, there's nothing wrong with using the textbooks, uh, but students are different. And we all, we notice based on what we just did that uh, learning uh, preference inventory, we are different. So how we can uh, provide different types of learning materials uh, to um, enhance uh, the learning experience by supporting different uh, learning preferences. Um, and then, this is the process of, okay, I'm seeing the one chat coming along. Yeah, it's done before. Okay, um, so uh, this is the, um, the how part. Um, again, I'm going to share the, the QM rubric standard for, uh, for, uh, for you, uh, with you in, in Canvas. And, and then when we look at the, um, um, the, the rubric standard for, uh, and then we can make a plan for the materials uh, change and adjustment. Uh, we uh, and uh, and then at the end use the standard for again to see that how, how what have I done? You know uh, how how do I address the standards? Uh, my suggestion is do it small. Start small. Um, let me see if we have enough time. So we have three thirty, uh, and then I'm not going to use too much of time, even though I have designed this activity. Um, you know, to talk about, to discuss this. Um, and so this is the, the, the QM rubric standard for the course materials. As you can see that um, all these uh, five standards within uh, QM standard four, uh, I think it just boils down to two questions. Number one is, are students using the right materials, which speaks to are these materials supporting the learning objectives? Uh, the second one is, are students using the materials effectively? Uh, that means how we uh, design, uh, provide the materials that um, support um, different learning preferences, right? Um, and then I do have a breakout room activity, but I don't believe I, I have that, uh, yeah, I don't think I'm the host. So anyway, that's that's okay. So uh, I'm not able to create a breakout room. So that's that's okay. So we can um, leave this um, activity for now. Uh, let me get to the really the most important part of the presentation today. So uh, and also I want to uh, leave uh, enough time for you to prepare for your next meeting because I know that you probably have been in Zoom multiple <laughs> times already. So uh, like I just said about, um, um, we are going to start small, right? So where do we go from here? So let's take a look, uh, what are the options for now? Uh, because I know faculty, especially healthcare professionals in the field, like you are so busy. And so how do we start from something small? So maybe we can consider like an ebook as an alternative or as a supplement uh, and then, Oh, 
Okay. Oh, that, that that's okay, Doctor Mahotra. Uh, I, I will uh, get to the end um, if uh, we have enough time because I really want to give time for some faculty to speak out uh, about to share their experiences. Um, and then we can also see that if we are using videos right now, and uh, is there a uh, are, are they optimally segmented? Right. Uh, we all know that why Hollywood movies are so uh, popular is because they're us. Uh, stimulate our brain that every probably less than a, a few minutes, like a six to seven minutes, I, I, I don't know. But the research does say that uh, the optimal length for the video, uh, especially the instructional video is to six to seven minutes. And then the other thing that we can consider is what about the PPT? Is that formatted for optimal cognition, right? Um, so what I want to share the next is, okay. So I do have uh, the give PowerPoint a facelift and I have uh, included some uh, uh, lecture notes and, and a slide a presentation. Both are from the same, from the UMass Medical School Clinical Faculty Development Center. Um, so let me click on the, the slide presentation that I really like that. Um, is We're not going through this, but um, I just want to show you that they have shared um, very interesting, like a techniques, um, how we can go uh, build on the four step model um, when we build a PowerPoint. Like the structure, uh, tell us you know, how to avoid um, some of the uh, background and, and the text used like this and the simplify. So, um, like I said, I'm not going to take much of your time because um, I really want to give our faculty uh, to talk about this later. Uh, and then the first one that I, I want to um, give the, uh, the microphone uh, to is Dr. El Shemi. Uh, um, and uh, I had a, a orientation with him uh, last fall when I joined uh, CNU. Uh, you know that to me, I have no science, science background at all. But his PowerPoint presentation really got me interested. Uh, and then uh, and I, I started to ask lots of questions. So uh, let me share his uh, presentation right here. And we're going through very quickly. And you can see very graphical that research with, with information as well. And the key information are highlighted in lots of the slides. And this is a data rich uh, slide and it has the key information highlighted for uh, to get my attention. So Dr. El Shami, uh, if, if you are available right now, do you mind sharing uh, your uh, techniques of creating uh, PowerPoint, please. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you so much, Dr. Wang, for giving me this opportunity. First of all, I uh, I think uh, there is a lot of uh, faculty and professor attending now, and I'm quite sure they are even much, much better than me uh, in preparing the PowerPoint, but just I would like just to, I mean, share my thoughts. I know everyone has his own style, but my Usually, whenever I do any presentation, I uh, usually not immediately jump in my computer. Always, I have a, a piece of paper, white paper, and pen with me, and I write what is the most highlighted uh, topics I would like to deliver in this presentation in just by my hand in that white paper. And then I start to try to convey these topics to slides, which takes too much time until to come with, uh, I try, my style, I try to use as little text as much as I can. That what I'm trying always to do in my slides uh, to make it more visual. And what I learned, uh, the rule I learned, don't put everything you want to explain in the slide. Just you put the highlights and whatever you want, you can speak on because that can grab the attention of the audience. That's my very simple thing. It's uh, 
make it try more figures, more visual than text reading, because I think uh, anyone can be focusing in any slide for more than 10 seconds or something like that, and then after that, the tension will go away. So that's all the simple role one. Uh, again, uh, thank you so much for having me today, but I'm quite sure uh, I'm maybe there is a lot of, a lot is much, much, much better than me. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Arshami. Um, yes, I think, you know, what you earlier shared about, uh, like you started from a piece of paper. I think that's so true because when we talk about online learning, uh, I have worked with faculty that uh, some faculty, uh, you know, in uh, previous jobs, and they um, had a little bit anxiety at the very beginning because uh, there's so many technology tools out there. Where do I start? And I actually says, uh, I actually said that start from paper, and they were shocked. And I said, why? And I said because on the paper we talk about how the, the planning and everything uh, from the the general and the broad, and then technology is just the icing on the cake, right? So um, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, I do have another uh, uh, PowerPoint, uh, which is uh, from uh, Dr. Um, Joe Patterson, who presented uh, for, uh, on, uh, for Italy last week, that uh, his uh, PowerPoint presentation is also very uh, intriguing. Um, and I, I was very, um, um, how to say that, I was very motivated to see all these information. And then I, it was very inspiring as well. Uh, I, I exchanged some information. Uh, I asked him some questions. I said, well, you're, uh, how, how are you going, uh, you know, how, how did you design this? Uh, and uh, with, with what kind of thoughts? And, and so he mentioned that, well, all these are designed to promote, um, you know, the, the visually appealing information, but with the key uh, information highlighted. Uh, and then also to promote a discussion. So I, I think that's, as you can see, uh, it, it's it's very visually appealing and with all the, um, the key information there, the keywords, right? Yeah, so uh, like, like I said, I'm also going to share this file uh, on um, uh, in Canvas. Uh, and then, um, is is Dr. Mohammed here? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Dr. Mohammed. Thank you so much for for coming. Uh, so, uh, so Dr. Mohammed uh, recently uh, won a travel award, uh, and then I think Dr. Uh, either Dr. Buckley or or um, I, I can't remember mentioned about that you students really like uh, your classes because you promote critical thinking skills. Uh, so I had the chance to, to have a, a short, you know, quick chat with, with uh, Dr. Um, Mohammed and, and ask him how he, um, just one thing, how, how, how did you uh, prepare materials for your students? I think that part was very, very, uh, very interesting. So um, thank you so much, Dr. Wang. And uh, you know, uh, similar to what Dr. Shami and of course the other experts uh, said, you know, like uh, we're all learning from each other, and uh, you know, uh, uh, everybody has his own style. And I'm not an expert of, of for sure, but I tend to try to uh, you know um, try to synergize with everything shared through today's presentation is to make it more appealing as much as possible. Also use some you know visual diagrams. You know, summary tables also helps a lot. You know, I, I try to put relevant information also together. So try to drive the students and actually lead them to comparing and contrasting, especially when you're teaching pharmacology and, you know, there's a, a ton of like medications in different classes. So I always try to help them like, you know, when you have like two medications that are similar or are different, I put them next to each other in a table or at least, you know, side by side. And also try to all these diagrams. Um, I try to keep it also visually appealing as much as possible, and using uh, bolding and underlining for the key concepts. You know, uh, and also try to keep the text uh, low as much as possible. Sometimes it's difficult, especially that my handouts uh, are usually intended as uh, to provide enough explanation. So it's it's a balance. You know, sometimes it can be a little bit dense if 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 I need to have the uh, the same thoughts in the same slide, so students, you know, don't get lost on the topic. But you know, I agree with everything that just you know said. It's it's about diagrams. It's about uh, 
you know, utilizing bolding and key concepts as much as possible. And, and for the applications also that, um, you know, I try to make it, uh, you know, uh, relatable to real life experiences as much as possible. So I try to provide them with like simple case uh, studies in a question form. So instead of like asking them to um, just, uh, um, um, you know, recognize or, or recall a specific medication, for example, in a lower bloom level, I try to use the, a simple concept of like, you know, uh, of, of, uh, of, you know, trying to take them a little bit towards the level of standardized exam questions where you get like an abstract case of course, at that level of pharmacology, it's much less dense, with much less details. However, I keep the key concepts in there. And then I ask them sometimes in like in a two-step process where they are supposed to pick out the important information, like, you know, what is the diagnosis? What are the signs and symptoms? Make the conclusion in their mind and then choose the most suitable medication for that patient, for example. So this is just, in a nutshell, the different techniques, uh, you know, I try to use. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of my colleagues already utilize that. And uh, I, ho I hope this brief, uh, you know, overview can can be helpful. And of course, I'll be happy to um, you know, discuss further with any one of my colleagues and in, in, in seeing you in general. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. Um, I I think um, when I uh, had a chat with you, I think the the, the very first the, the opening uh, conversation that we had it was very uh, in, uh, impressive. Is that you said uh, you consider yourself as a student when you design. All these materials and then design learning activities. I think that's the that's the uh, the, the mind shift, uh, the, the paradigm shift uh, when uh, for for the uh, yes yes Dr. Wang. So I always put myself in the student shoes because I, when I always put my handouts together, I, I have been a student my whole life. I'm actually a student student right now, taking you know different exams and and different uh, certifications. So I always you know I, I I design my handouts in the same way that I studied myself. You know, so for example, if I use these different, you know, techniques that I just mentioned of comparing, contrasting, summarizing the bullet points or, or underlining some specific keywords, these are the same techniques that I do when I study, you know, when I put summaries in table formats and all of that. So I actually uh, do the same things for my handouts. So in a way, you know, trying to, uh, to teach the students also how to study. So it's like, you know, the saying of like, you know, uh, teaching them how to fish. That's, that's exactly what I try to share with my students that, you know, I, I, I showcase these examples that, you know, um, do you see that, how complex that, you know, um, list of medications. However, if you go this way, put it in a table format or side by side, or like, you know, put together a summary of what's common and what's different, then this also helps, you know, I hope that helps them to build their own study skills of how to navigate different and complex situations and also how to break it down into simple complex and connect these dots. And at the end, also in the summary of key concepts that I give it to them, I share with them some of these bullet points. And so sometimes in a sort of questions like how many uh, of these medications are good for cardiovascular patients, how many are not, how many of the medications are good for kidney disease patients, how many are not. So I try to always like, you know, cross reference different concepts together. And uh, as I said, uh, putting them, putting myself in their shoes. So hopefully this, you know, develops their own study skills also. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, and uh, we, so, so this is what I uh, brought up, you know, how we do go from here, start with our present, uh, with our um, PowerPoint first, right? If I, I'm sure most of us are using PowerPoint. So how can we uh, give our PowerPoint a facelift? Um, and then there's another, let me see, there's a chat. Uh, and then, Okay, so how many of you have heard about learning glass? I think the CHS uh, faculty probably need to uh, need, need to uh, be uh, not not to answer the question. <laughs> okay, so I, I actually reveal the answer uh, in advance. So um, okay, uh, I well this is something that we can save for, for, for later for your own independent uh, like uh, learning or uh, let me show what's really important here. Okay, so um, the reason why I said uh, the learning glass is that our uh, school actually has this uh, and the CHS uh, has uh, been using this uh, to um, um, record the lecture. 
And uh, I, uh, I know Dr. Leite is here, and then I don't know whether uh, Professor uh, Inoborek is here. Uh, and I do have a uh, lecture. Let me see if I can find that very quick. Um, okay, so Dr. Leite, are you are you there right now? Um, yes, I am. Okay, could you please just briefly describe what it is while I'm um, looking for that uh, file uh, to show it to faculty? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. Yeah, the, the learning glass is a very, a very nice technology. You have to use a special neon um, writing things. Uh, it, it's, it's a double glass with a light inside that you uh, capture the image from a camera from behind. It's pretended- Our topic today is the first lab. Sorry, go, please go ahead. It, it pretends the professor is teaching um, in a whiteboard or in a, you know, in a chalkboard, but the camera is behind it. So, and then there is equipment that they capture the image and then they flip the image before it goes to the computer. So, and then you can do what, I mean, the sky is the limit. You can add it, you can insert things, cut things, uh, play with sounds and everything else. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Leite. Yeah, so so what I'm playing right here is actually equal to the heat minus work. Is it is a professor of uh, work um and work collaborated with uh, Dr. Leite and produced this video in their studio. Remember that before we set up, we said that our system can interact mechanically with its environment. It can interact thermally with the environment. It, it, it interacts mechanically with the environment when it expands or it contracts, and it interacts thermally with the environment when there is heat exchange as a result of temperature difference between the system and the environment. Uh, Dr. Wang, uh, let me just add one thing. So, for example, when we see this, this part here, one of uh -huh. the advantages that I think from the learning glass first, mm -hmm. you don't have that. It's, 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 it's a kind of traditional quote unquote classroom. However, you can add it as we did here and emphasize the key points in each, uh, in each concept that he is teaching. For example, we are right now here emphasizing mechanically and what it means and thermally, what it means. Yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, let me go back to my PowerPoint. Okay. Um, yes. So, um, so if you, um, okay, let me get back to the end of the presentation. Okay. Yes. So, um, so thank you for 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 sharing, Dr. Leite. Uh, so this is this this is very uh, very interesting technology. And so I think what. Um, uh, faculty could, you know, consider. Uh, well, I uh, I had a chat with Dr. Uh, Pro Professor Burick as well. So I asked him, how do you like it? And he said, I really like it. You know, he said at the very beginning, probably there was something that I I need to technically I need to keep in mind and that not go out of the frame. But uh, once I practice a little bit, and I really like it. And I said, how do your students like it? And he said, my students really like that. Uh, he used it for the physics lecture, and he said the students really like it. He shared the, 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 the thought process uh, and then uh, spelled it out and then really uh, works so well with the, um, the formula, uh, demonstrating how the, the formula works. And uh, so he, he said the students love it and he plans to use it again. Um, so, um, okay, so I know that uh, we have more meetings. So, um, Again, back to this uh, alignment um, that no, no matter what instructional changes that we're going to make, uh, we always you know, come back to this alignment concept. So uh, if we're doing uh, material, making some materials new or adjustment, then we're going to make sure that it's going to support the, um, the, the learning objectives. Um, the, the last activity that I would uh, like you to um, provide your feedback is that let me go to the chat and uh, put in the Google form. Okay, so uh, this Google form, um, 
is collecting your feedback about um, future workshops, some ideas. Uh, and then if you are interested in providing some, uh, like uh, presenting for, for Italy, please, please do so welcome. Uh, all fa faculty be able to share. Uh, and then also I, I use the form uh, and Dr. Mahotra and I, uh, we collect the form as well uh, to uh, get your name and then so that we get, when we produce uh, uh, certification that we can know the attendance. And so, uh, so for, for the two purposes. So uh, please just take a probably less than two minutes, I think, uh, to provide some feedback. And then uh, that's, that's, that's the end of the presentation today. Uh, and um, one thing that I do want to mention is that uh, at, after this uh, presentation, I will upload the file uh, to Canvas. Um, let me show you very quick. Um, okay. Hmm. Okay. Um, share screen. Okay, there it is. Okay, so let me share you my screen. That this this is the the, the canvas. Uh, um, let me go to the student view. Home. Okay, so when you go to go to the canvas, uh, please go to the modules. And then uh, this is the uh, well, the workshop materials for fall 2020 and then spring 2021. Uh, here, I, I will upload this, uh, all the uh, important files to the presentation six using and or creating engaging learning materials beyond the paper book back and uh, PDFs right here. Okay. Thank you so much, and I really appreciate um, your time. And I know that we all are so busy, and then really appreciate uh, faculty, Dr. Hashimi, Dr. Mohammed, and then uh, Dr. Leite to share your best practices of using uh, engaging learning materials beyond uh, uh, the paperbacks uh, and, and the PDFs. And I think, like, uh, like we all agree, uh, when we think about from the student's perspective, uh, and we can always, you know, do something different for the students. Thank you so much again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wong. Thank you.